would ask uh, Coach Seegers to call the roll. Trustee Anthony. Present. Trustee Foster. Good evening. Trustee Graham Cudet. Good evening. Let the record reflect Clerk Seegers is in attendance. Treasurer Slavens. Good evening. Trustee Snyderman. I'm present. And Supervisor Williams. Good evening. On the uh, consent calendar, consent agenda this evening, this is an item regarding a request by the Canton Township Merit Commission about the application of a department head's benefits. At the request of the board members, this item will be removed from the consent calendar and placed on the regular agenda for discussion. As a result, a number of considerations, I am seeking the board's concurrence to place this item at the start of this evening's meeting. Also, prior to commencing any discussion on the agenda item based on recommendation of the legal counsel, as a result of notification from at least two parties of possible litigation concerning this item, also includes a possibility of inquiry to the ethics board. I'm advising the board and members of the administrative staff to limit discussion on this topic when responding to questions this evening. Anyone who wishes to speak on this agenda item will be held to a three minute time limit. And also there's a second amendment I would like to make to the agenda and that is uh, instead of legislative updates, or update, make it legislative updates to include uh, Congresswoman Haley Stevens, who will speak first, and then immediately following uh, Senator uh, Dana Polhanke will speak. So call for a motion to approve the agenda as modified. So moved. Those in favor as the agenda is modified, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, we have two sets of minutes. Call for a motion to approve both sets of minutes from the September 24th and October 1st, 2019 meetings. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the minutes for the September 24th and October 1st, 2019 board meetings. Those motion is presented. Say aye. 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 Now would be the time in our uh, calendar to any citizens' non-agenda items. If anybody's here to speak on any items that is not on the agenda this evening, now would be the time to speak. Seeing none, uh, call for a motion, uh, Treasurer Slavens, to pay the bills. Mr. Supervisor, I make a motion that we pay the bills. Support. Pay the motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Good. Aye. Also, thank you. Uh, Congressman, uh, Congresswoman Haley Stevens, now if you would please approach the uh, podium. Well, good evening, and, and thank you all so much for having me here. Thank you, uh, Mr. Supervisor, as well as uh, the Board of Trustees and, and Mr. Clerk. It is uh, a delight to be with you here this evening. I um, come with a uh, flag um, that has been um, flown over the capital of the United States um, to bestow and uh, honor and recognition of uh, the great township of Canton and for for you to display around our also our great partnership uh, in Washington, D.C., and working hand in hand with our municipal government. So I, I have the privilege of representing uh, just an incredible district uh, in the United States Congress, home to 24 municipalities that are so connected to our manufacturing and innovation sector, skilled trades, um, home to incredible public schools, which I know all of you in Canton know all, all too well. And I, I certainly would like to, to recognize um, uh, the, the leadership that all of you have shown in a priority area of, of mine uh, that I join you in, which is around recycling and recycling technologies. I, in the United States Congress, sit on the House Education and Labor Committee, as well as the House Science, Space, and Technology Committee. And I am a subcommittee chair for research and technology, which gives me uh, gavel-holding privileges and the opportunity to, to hold hearings and to put forward legislation. And um, certainly through the, the work that, that you have shown, Mr. Supervisor, uh, with the uh, Conference of Western Wayne uh, and being made aware of some of the the challenges and the costs that our, our municipalities have incurred given uh, the, the changes uh, from, from China uh, that have really shouldered burden back onto our municipalities. I, I join you in, in working to uh, address those issues. And so I've been able to pass a uh, appropriations through to require the Environmental Protection Agency to fund a national recycling strategy. I held a hearing on recycling technologies 
cities. And this was really a thing of beauty in, in Washington, D.C., um, focused on recycling technologies and the standards, having industry represented, um, federal agencies. Uh, we had uh, your, your uh, city manager counterpart from, from Plymouth uh, represented. Uh, and everyone was saying the same thing, that they want to see the standards and kind of some of the cohesion come into place from the, the federal government as well as some of the opportunities that this will really bring to uh, communities across this country as well as individual taxpayers. And so often we see in, in the national discourse and when we you know run into challenges, we see blame game politics taking place. And really I'm a big believer and this is why I'm delighted to spend a little bit of time with you here this evening and, and, and just linking arms and, and uh, tackling challenges head on and together uh, because that's really where we get some of the, the best outcomes. And so on October 25th, I'm bringing my science committee um, to the district. We're going to be in Livonia on October 25th, uh, Friday morning, um, holding a, a hearing on um, technologies uh, for suburban communities, smart cities technologies. We've got some great experts that are gonna be coming in and, and also my, my colleagues who represent districts are around the, the country. And so it's certainly been a, a fast moving first year in, in Congress. It's, you know, it's almost quickly coming to, to an end this, this first year here, but been uh, thrilled to actually pass some bills, one on the building blocks of STEM Act, supporting and investing in early childhood education for sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematics, uh, particularly looking at the gender gap in those fields, so requiring the National Science Foundation to do some of that funding. That was a bipartisan, bicameral bill. And then my, my second bill, which was the um, Advanced Manufacturing Leadership Act um, that uh, supports an integrated uh, federal approach to uh, funding research and development, technology transfer, as well as those workforce training initiatives. I was joined with, uh, uh, joined by some uh, original co-sponsors, Congressman um, Gonzalez, um, Anthony Gonzalez, as well as Congressman Troy Balderson, both who are from Ohio. So we've said, okay, it's the only time Michigan and Ohio are coming together to win anything, but we've we've been able to, to win and, and, and join forces uh, on, on uh, helping to uh, see the success of regional economy, economies like ours, uh, see them thrive. And uh, so certainly remaining dedicated to lowering the cost of prescription drugs and kind of providing some of that stability that uh, folks are looking for from their federal government. You know, there's only 535 of us there, so we want to be a proven and effective partner. This is why I've taken a, a really good look at some of the Department of Transportation funding opportunities. I know all of you have been on the front line around the roadway fundings and, you know, really um, grateful for your leadership and what you guys have been able to see through with Ford Road. Um, the money that would go in to doing roadway expansions comes from the Department of Transportation. It's a build grant. Um, we've had in Michigan two $200 million of build grant funding. And, you know, this is out of the billions and billions that they allocate across the country. And when I looked at it, our district has never ever gotten a build grant. That means Canton to Novi, up to Waterford, over to Troy. And it's wholly inexcusable that we, you know, continue to kind of pay the price of being overlooked in that way. And we deserve our fair share of, of federal funding, you know, for that infrastructure guarantee around safe and maintained roadways and, and bridges, roadway expansion needs, obviously clean water and clean and fresh air for people to breathe remains imperative. And it's so we can continue Continue to do what we all here and can know all too well, which is uh, to innovate and to create and be connected to a global economy. We are movers in that space here in Michigan. It's all eyes on us. I'm certainly playing a big role in in the Congress on the the trade deal that we're you know eager to get done for the benefit not only of our small mid-sized businesses and particularly our manufacturers and my my colleagues who represent more um, agrarian communities will 
will say for the farmers, but also the workers. And so I, uh, you know, have met with, uh, and I've had over 80 meetings about with manufacturers since I've been sworn in, our small businesses, our training centers, and really keeping a finger on the pulse around this magnificent, uh, you know, sector of the economy that we represent. And then certainly also, you know, promoting equal opportunity and, uh, you know, the, the opportunities for all to prosper and kind of making sure that we, you know, join you in some of the statements that you've made as, um, a municipality around shutting out hate and making sure that we're welcoming communities to all. Diversity is our strength and obviously, as our speaker likes to say, our unity is our power. So joining forces with you on a united front um, to continue to achieve our goals here in Canton Township and to thrive. Thank you so much. And Mr. Township Supervisor, I'll, I'm gonna walk this flag up to you. I you know, would be delighted to see you fl uh, flying this over here. and in our, you know, in our wonderful comrades. Thank you, thank you all so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now I know you're running off to yet another oh, event, so, so enjoy. <laughs> thank you very much, Congresswoman. Can I read your notes? Okay. <laughs> Senator Paul Hankey. The, uh, the time is yours, Senator. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be brief. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Williams, and thank you for uh, inviting me here tonight. Um, I just want to take a couple seconds to recognize and celebrate and thank you for your successes, um, namely the Lily Road Construction Project. Um, and I just received a request from Supervisor Williams today to uh, work with MDOT about your left turn problem on, um, oh, yeah. on Ford Road. So we're going to get to work on that. Um, uh, congratulations to um, Michael Segrest for doubling the permanent AV list. That's so important to removing barriers and making it convenient for people to vote. That's impressive. Um, Supervisor Williams earlier this year took me on a tour of your block program and I'll tell you what I follow them on social media and it just warms my heart you know what you what you're doing for these kids um, it's and in, in addition you have exceptional youth programs the lead like a girl and um, be a model man so following what you're doing and um, proud of what you're doing and um, by the way I represent uh, Canton Township, Livonia, Plymouth, Northville, and Wayne. And uh, at, at this point, I can take any questions you may have. So um, Gretchen Whitmer, the governor, just put out a statement in the middle of September about recycling. Are you familiar with that at all? She talked about recycling centers and... <sighs> I know recycling is important to you and to Canton in particular, but in particular to you, um, Amory, um, there is a work group. I, I'm not familiar with the letter, but there's a work group that's crafting a plan to modify the solid waste code, and it's just in its early stages, and we're hoping that that's going to provide a framework and an incentive to increase and expand municipal recycling. So um, I am aware I will become familiar with the letter. So what, what was the letter? She's talking about expanded recycling centers and That's using right. EGLE and figuring out how to right. determine whether one was full or at capacity or not. Okay. So. I'll, ch I'll, I'll definitely read that. Yes, Michael. I have a question. Um, Canton Townships has partnered with, um, with Growth Works in St. Mary's Hospital on uh, a refuge recovery program. Um, it helps individuals who are going through substance abuse disorder connect with uh, somebody uh, who is, has gone through that, um, helps them kind of get, get out of that situation and into a new life. Uh, there was some funding in the state uh, initially proposed in the state budget, I think it was about a million dollars. Uh, it doesn't look like the governor and the legislature were on the same page and it hasn't made it uh, to being signed. Do you know if there's any talk about that being added to a supplemental funding bill? Is there talk about a supplemental funding bill? I saw a little bit of stuff in the, in the paper today, but I just, maybe you could talk about that. Well, I'm really familiar with Growth Works and Rescue Recovery and Pat who leads the Rescue Recovery Program. The fact that it was vetoed is very disappointing to me. Um, I was one of the people fighting very hard 
to get, I think it ended up being a half a million dollar proposal in the, the budget that was presented to the governor. Um, I'm not sure of the outcome, to be frank. And uh, uh, I do know that our appropriations chair, when he looked at me, he's, he knew that growth works and rescue recovery was my number one, and still is my number one priority. So, disappointed, not done fighting. Um, and that's about all I know about that. Saying that, I don't have to ask any questions. Okay. Yeah. I, w I would just say keep in touch with us on Ford Road and what's going on sure. there with the funding. Um, one thing I've mentioned to the Congresswoman is possibly federal funds for smart cities, which she mentioned, and if there's something going on in the state in that area as well. We have an opportunity here in the next three to five years when we reimagine Ford Road to make it a, a a leading edge or state-of-the-art road um, for whatever's needed in the future, be it smart cars or communication needs and things like that. Okay. So if you hear anything past yeah. your desk, we, we're interested. Note of it. Absolutely. Um, just thinking about road funding, um, I know that you had a conversation with um, Jim Castiva, who was the chair of our um, roads task force, and he mentioned the need to redo the Public Act 51 formula. Um, he told me he had that conversation with you. Um, I know that the Senate Majority Leader said that that's something that he would like to take a look at, and I know that there are a couple of other senators on both sides of the aisle that have mentioned um, that that would be a good thing for communities like Canton Township and more populous um, right. communities. So um, if you could continue to have that conversation yes. with yeah. your legislators and let them know that um, the current formula is antiquated and we need to update antiquated it. Antiquated and it disproportionately benefits the rural, you know, you know, I'm not telling you something you don't know. So very familiar, absolutely not opposed to um, redistributing that formula and um, we'll, we'll take that back with me. Go ahead, Michael. I just one brief quote. I know in one of the proposals for a potential solution for road funding, there was talk about allowing local municipalities to implement a 1% sales tax. Um, can you just make sure that that's include, not just limited to Act 51 communities like villages and cities to try to, if that does go forward in, as they talk more about a long-term solution for road funding, if that's one component, try to uh, slip townships into there too. Okay, understood. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, I usually I, I, I do find these meetings interesting. Unfortunately, I have to go to another one. So usually I would stay and hang around. But um, for anyone here that would like to call my office, I would like to give you my phone number because I'm here for you. So it's 517-373-7350. That's 517-373-7350. You talk to Nick and he'll answer the phone and we'll, we'll try to help you. Thank you. All right. Next item in the agenda is the consent calendar that will be read as a single motion. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the consent calendar uh, as amended, item C1, implementation of the CIP or capital improvement plan. That's exciting. Item C2, consider approval of payment of the annual software license fees to Kiri works for the on-base document management system. Uh, and then item, the new item C3, consider budget increases uh, for the 2019 tree removal and pruning project uh, purchase order of Owen, for Owen Tree Services Incorporated. Support. Those in favor of the motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G0. <coughs> Consider of a resolution on the matter referred from Merit Commission. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following resolution. Whereas a special meeting of the Canton Township Merit Commission was held on September 16, 2019 
to consider a request presented by a merit system employee at the Commission's July 22, 2019 regular meeting regarding the employee's pension benefit level and the Merit Commission resolved to forward this request to the Board of Trustees, uh, whereas the request involved the application of Section 2-103C of the Canton Township Ordinances uh, concerning the impact of a promotion to a position in the classified service uh, from a bargaining unit position to fringe benefits received after the date of promotion. Whereas Appendix 5 to the Merit System Human Resources uh, Policy Non-Union Classified Employees Fringe Benefits Section I-6A-4 which governs such promotions uh, provides in part that the retirement benefit level for the both the defined benefit and defined contribution plan includes years of service multiplier and any age requirement at the time of transfer and I'm sorry whereas township the township has notified the employee as outlined in various employment letters and associated documents that the MERS defined benefit pension benefits provided to the employee would be the same benefits provided to members of the IAFF bargaining unit employed by the township prior to July 1, 2013 who participate in the firefighters retirement program as provided in the collective bargaining agreement including future changes whereas the township pension township the employees pension uh, benefit level has been calculated according to this method in the township's annual MERS retirement system valuation since 2012 utilizing the MERS DB multiplier vesting and years of service requirements FAC calculation and employee contribution rate apl applicable to part participants in that plan program including any changes and whereas the town, the Board of the Trustees has conducted a thorough review of the documents and materials provided by the employee in the Township Administration, including the resolution of the Merit Commission, now therefore be it resolved that the Canton Township Board of Trustees hereby affirms that the Merit Commission Human Resources Policy Manual Appendix 5, Non-Union Classified Employees Fringe Benefits Section 16A4, governing members of the classified service, promoted from bargaining units has been properly applied to the employee. Okay. In terms of the details and the background, we're all in the motion itself, so I don't have to regurgitate that. At this point, is there any public comment on this item? Is there any public comment on this item? Okay, seeing, uh, sir, would you like to please? Uh, um, and I'll uh, just restate, please come to the podium, uh, name, address, and then please limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, good evening, Kevin Samowski. I'm an attorney uh, with the Flood Law Firm. Uh, I, I'm a P City of Plymouth resident. Um, and I did send a letter to each of the Board of <coughs> Trustee members and that was also hand delivered today. Uh, it was emailed prior to 4.30 this afternoon. And in that letter, we outline our position. Uh, it's very clear to us on this uh, behalf of Director Meyer that the ordinance was not followed regarding the reduction of his benefits at the time. Um, it's pretty much spelled out uh, in the letter that the bridge down that occurred with the IAFF would not apply to Director Meyer since he was not a member of IAFF at the time uh, that agreement was reached. And more specifically, and equally as important, that the um, agreement excluded the fire chief. So at the time that he was promoted to fire chief in 2012, he was promised in testimony at the Merit Commission from Mr. LaJoy and uh, Dave Medley, uh, who was the former HR manager, that was the intent, to recruit individuals from the bargaining unit to a classified position and to promise them that they would retain the same benefits that they had as members of the bargaining unit. That was the promise upon which the promotion was accepted. The subsequent bridging down of the IAF, IAFF um, agreement, their multiplier, did not apply to Director Meyer because A, he was not a member of that bargaining unit at the time that agreement took place, and the agreement specifically excluded him as chief. 
<clears throat> as we point out, the ordinance mandates that any change in benefits needs to be voted on by four members of the board. Supervisor LaJoy testified both on July 22nd and again on September 16th. That was never done. He never approved it. This board never approved it. So uh, without rereading the letter and restating it, there was a promise made, the policy, the merit system, human resources policy indicated clearly, you shall retain your benefit. That was the promise on which he relied on. He took the promotion, subsequent negotiations with the union, reduced the union multiplier, not Director Meyer. No specific action was brought before the board regarding Director Meyer. So the ordinance, we believe, is, is fairly clear that his benefits stay intact until and unless changed by this board. And that hasn't happened. So I, I know you've all had the letter. I hope you had opportunity to read it. Um, and our position has been stated fairly clearly, I believe, uh, at both uh, the Merit System uh, Commission meetings and in the letter. So I want to thank you uh, for your attention uh, and the time allowed. But I really, truly believe that this was a mistake that was made. That somehow, at the time that the union was bridged down and their uh, contribution to the defined benefit plan was changed, that Director Meyer was included in that group when he shouldn't have been. And Please that's how that's three done. Minutes now, so thank you very much for your comments. Well, thank you very much. Any additional public comments? Any additional public comment? Seeing none, is there any board questions, comments at this point? Anne-Marie? I'm just wondering, uh, you had said at the beginning we have to, because it might go into litigation, be careful with what we say, so I, I guess I can say. You're not being censored, Anne-Marie. Okay. You can say any darn thing, ask any questions you would like to ask. So, Director Meyer, I mean, we, you are a valued employee, and I want you to know that, that you're important to the township and to the board. Um, so I really, it, I'm dismayed that it has come to this and we were not here when, when this happened before. So based on that, like we read what we had seen, this is the decision we came that, well, I can speak personally for myself that, you know, that I came to based on what I had seen. Um, a question that I would have is to Wendy, um, if we were to do something, what would it cost the township? Excuse me, based on some conversations with MERS, our entire system has to be funded at 80% funded status. Uh, and then any enhancement of a benefit would have to be funded at 100%. So in order for us to get to an 80% funded level, that costs $22 million, plus on top of whatever the uh, additional benefit would be. You. You're welcome. Stephen? I, um, I also like and respect Director Meyer. I feel bad that he feels he's not been treated well in this situation. Um, but as a trustee with the discussion and evidence I heard in the Merit Commission meeting uh, and reviewing the documents from that proceeding and understanding the financial impact that make, making changes would have on this community as the finance director just stated, I believe that the benefits he's receiving are the proper ones, and so I'm going to support this motion. Comments, questions, go ahead. Uh, I, I just want to say this is a very unfortunate incident that's happened that should have been taken care of with a prior administration. Um, I too, I believe, and I think we all support you and appreciate all that you do um, for Canton Township for the residents and for both police and fire and for all of us. And it's unfortunate that, you know, this, that they threw the ball to us, but I too have to support after all of the information 
that we've been given this resolution. Go ahead, Summer. Just say that I went back and forth on this decision in my mind, um, and I want to agree with what um, Treasurer Slavin said that this was a very difficult decision. I wish it would have been taken care of um, with the previous administration, but I will support the resolution based on the evidence that I've seen. No further comment. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Uh, item G1, moving on. Consider purchase order reduction and approval of an emergency replacement purchase order for replacement of damaged contactors, relays, and fuses at the Village Theater. This is in the form of two motions. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve an emergency purchase order for the replacement of the damaged air conditioning parts at the Village Theater to Bumler Mechanics, 6260, 18 and a half mile road in Sterling Heights, Michigan, 48314 from the account number listed for capital outlay buildings and improvements in the amount of $11,231. Support. In terms of background, facility service staff was notified the Village Theater was very hot and uncomfortable. The air conditioning units seemed to be stop working after Village Theater encountered a power outage over the weekend. Upon inspection, it was found that the contactors <coughs> and numerous fuses on the six units were damaged in need of replacement. Um, they did indeed repair it under the emergency basis and now seek your approval to pay for the repairs. Is there any board questions, comments? Go ahead, Stephen. Um, Director Holmberger, uh, I noticed there was a surge, a power surge that affected this. Is there also going to be something put in place to prevent power surges from doing this in the future? At that, the that's what these pieces were and in, are intended to do. Oh, I that's thought that. they were pieces that, of what were broken by the surge. Yes, What's they that? are, but they're intended to pre protect the rest of the unit. So there, it's kind of a single use oh. piece that if there is a surge, that would. It would Kind of $11,000 of damage as opposed to $100,000. Absolutely. Okay. But if it happens again, then it could be the same $11,000 worth of parts that we'll have to replace. Potentially. Oh, we've okay. had surges in the past and we've maybe lost one of the, the contactors because there's six units out there. This is the first time we've ever lost all of them. We had one sitting on the shelf for that instance and we were able to get one unit up and running to get the house cooled, um, but the other five units still needed to be replaced. Okay, thank you. Questions, those in favor of the first motion is presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries, second motion. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the reduction of purchase order, the purchase order listed in the amount of $11,231. Second. In favor of the second motion is presented, please state aye. 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 Motion carries, item G2. Consider sale of Canton property and authorize myself to sign all the documents necessary, necessary to close on the sale. Mr. Supervisor, I move that Canton accept the letter of intent from Alan and Jennifer Williams and authorize yourself, Supervisor Williams, to sign the, per the formal purchase agreement and any other documents necessary to complete the sale of the parcel located east of Willard Street and to the west of the ITC corridor. Upward. One similar to those that we've seen in the past on the corridor, uh, we are ensuring that the parcels that are being picked up are only behind the, the individual's homes and not encroaching on their neighbor's homes. So it's a another one of those for uh, the Williams family, not related to myself. <laughs> Williams and Smith and Brown are very common names um, uh, on, on Willard um, to close out the deal for them, as we've done for some of the other residents there. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion is presented. State aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, let's see, single, so is that? The end. That's it? That's it. That's it. That's very good. All right. Um, any additional uh, staff comment at this time? No? Any public comment at this time? Public comment. Seeing none, any board comments? Close, be prior to close. 
I'll just like to take this opportunity to talk to the over 1,000 individuals who are participating in the Van Buren School District election this November who have absentee ballots out. Make sure you uh, answer uh, the one question on the ballot and we we'll get that in uh, as fast as possible. We'd really appreciate it. Um, we've got about 400 of them back out of the 1,000 that we put out. So, uh, But they're out there and uh, appreciate your participation. If you are in the southwest uh, portion of Canton Township, uh, please uh, make sure you exercise your right to vote uh, this November. Any additional comments? Seeing none, call for a motion to adjourn. I move. Second. Those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Motion carries, we are adjourned.